So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Tonight is November 5th, 2020. And the topic for this evening and also for the month of November is illumination. So um, I just want to start with um, maybe giving a little bit of a definition of what I mean by illumination. It really is the, the process of allowing more light in. And so illumination is really all, everybody is being illuminated all the time. We, we are getting in, as we are on this um, journey of remembering who we are, we are actually just light. We are joy, light, love. And we are remembering more of who we are. So that is really our, the, the process of, some people call it ascension. Some people call it awakening. So there are many different um, words that can be used. However, um, that's what I mean when I say illumination. And I remember when I started this, this journey of awakening, um, it really started when I start to ask myself this question of who am I? Or some other questions, which is similar in the, the, the kind of similar vein. And the, um, the other questions may be, what is my purpose? So I've asked myself these questions, these questions many, many times over the years, over and over again. And each time I get um, a different version of the answer. And I actually, at some point, um, I would say I, I really, really just sincerely wish to be told who I am so that and, and also what my purpose is so that I can just, you know, get on with becoming who I am supposed to be and, and just do what it is that um, is my purpose to sort of kind of fulfill my purpose. So, so there, there's all this frustration because um, knowing who you are and what your purpose is, is not something that you... It's not so. It's not like reading a book, or um, or so. It's nothing like that. It's not a simple question. It it may be simple for some people, but um, it if you really understand who you are, then it's not a a sim. You will understand that it's not a simple process, because who you are is is continually being revealed to you. It's like peeling an onion. It's not one dimensional, it's multi-dimensional. It's, so that's why it's not an, e it's not an easy process. However, for me, um, how it happened was, and I would like to share this with you to, to kind of illustrate a point of um, what the process of illumination because we are all being guided by our soul. We are all being illuminated by our soul step by step. And some people, um, uh, uh, for some people, it's a slow process. For some people, it's um, like a, it's a quick process. So I would like to share my process so that, so that it can be um, used as a guideline for those of you who, who are in, curious about this process of illumination. And I'm sharing this be, because I'm just assuming that just, just by the fact that you are tuning into this podcast or this these kinds of podcasts that is more about raising your um, consciousness that you are at the very least curious about this process of remembering who we truly are. So that's why I'm the, for the, uh, the the first week, I would like to just share my process, and for the next couple of weeks, I would like to actually highlight some some points that um, I would say kind of like uh, condense 
version of my experience, the, the, the lesson learned, so that maybe it will make the ease, the, the pro this process easier and smoother for some of you. So then what, who, who am I? So um, I was given a name at birth by my family and I was also given a family as well. So I have a family and they, and my parents kind of um, like made sure I know who I am, what I'm supposed to do. And if I um, am at a loss to what I'm supposed to do, they are always around. There are always some people around to tell me what I'm supposed to do. And, and so, so almost all of you have gone through this process that you, you have a name at birth, you have a family name, you're given a um, name, mine, mine's a, it's, it's Winnie. And, and while we are here just on earth, we, we play out this role. We, and, and the way we play is we just live it. We just make it up day by day and we make up uh, according to what other people told us that we should be doing. And that's in the old energy, that's how we play. And, um, and so just to, just to want to highlight that, I, I was not born um, like Franco who, who really has a lot more access. I think he, he mentioned somewhere that he has about maybe 90, 95% access of who he is um, when he was born. So he, he's, he's born really aware of, you know, who his, his real identity is. Um, and so was Enelia Benz. And uh, I think to, to a certain extent, um, Sifu James also was kind of born like that too, um, in that they, they have various degrees of access to who they truly are. Whereas for me, um, I, I was not born knowing who or remembering who I was, who I am. So, and yes, I have abilities. I, I, I still remember that I was always able to hear things that other people can't hear. So I have something that's called clear audience. Um, I'm, I'm clear audience, so I, that means I can hear things that other people can't hear. I can, um, that's why, so I, I'm able, I have the ability to interpret energy and be able to get information out of just from the energy that, um, that I'm around. And also I have um, the ability to astro project. So there are like even up to my early 20s, I was able to um, get out of my body. So my soul was able to get out of my body and just, you know, go around, do other things. Um, so those are some of the abilities that uh, like even in my early 20s, I have that I never thought that there was anything special about it because I never shared it with um, anyone. It's just, you know, I, I assume that other people can have those things too because you know I never talked about it and I and and when I um realized that I was able to astro project I did try to google or, or find search online um whether other people can do that and there are actually some some books about um how to do astro projection so I'm I just um assume that you know anyone can do that Maybe with some practice, you can do it um, easier. Uh, however, you know, some everyone can do that. So I never knew that, that that's actually some special abilities that I have. To me, that's just me having, you know, just is one of the things that I can do. Just like I, I can sing, I can, I can dance and I can um, paint pictures, like fine art pictures. So those are things that I can do not as good as Picasso, I can't paint like him. However, I can paint, I can draw. So, you know, so that's just the way I see it. From, from my own experience, that's, that's um, what I have. And so my first experience, I would say the first step 
of my illumination or waking up was um, was actually um, being, I would say the first step or the first first sign is that I feel, I felt long time ago, I felt, I felt this void in my life that just couldn't be filled. And I think by the, that time I had a family, I had kids, I, I have I have two children already, and yes, even though like I have all of that, but there is still uh, I have a job and all that, I have a career and all that, but you know there is something that I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But there is just a a void in my being that I I cannot. There is no no words to describe it. I just know that there is a void there. So I think that was that was the first crack. That was the or the first um, inkling that there is something beyond that I want to um, that really guided me to find out more. And then the next the next step was really I think because um, my soul or, or my soul really knew that okay there yeah she's looking so good let's let's give this let's make an opportunity for her so the, this opportunity was when I become fascinated by energy and that's when I think I've told the stories about um, learning reconnection energy from Eric Pearl so and all of that that whole um, experience, which I shall not, uh, I'm not going to repeat that anymore. Just enough to say is that because of that experience, I I was really fascinated by energy. And, and there is something about energy that really I want, there is this inner pull to want to know more about it, discover more about it, to really learn about it. That is, it's, for some people, it, it is, um, they want to be an artist, they want to paint. For me, it is energy. It is really learning about energy, something about learning how to shift energy, how to work with energy, how to know more about and decipher how energy actually works. That really excites me and, and, and make me come alive. When I, so that really is what um, makes me tick, let's say. Because energy, there's so many ways to manipulate energy. So just, you know, being a Reiki um, practitioner, that's just, that's just, a, just, just scratching the surface. So many things that is still um, to be explored about energy. And the fact that you can just um, think a thought and and use that thought to change, to shift energy. I think that's so much more powerful that you don't even have to lift a, thinker, a finger. All you have to do is change your thoughts and you can actually change your own energy. I find that fascinating. So that that is really my the second um, I would say the second crack of the the box that I'm in, and then the next phase um, is that um, I I mentioned that I was um, so I've been exploring about energy, learning about shamanism learning um, how to do energy work and all that for a while now. So, I've, and, and I've had different um, experiences with, I would say, um, entities showing up um, that uh, I've shared at various points. And then at some point, and I think it is, let's see what time it is, which year it is now, um, I think it's about 2003 now, um, which is the next phase we uh, started. And that's when um, 2003, then, oh, 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 actually a little bit later, it's maybe 2013, 14, around that time, that the next phase started. And 
it's when I was visited by the Pleiadians, the Arcturians started coming, um, and then um, representatives of the Galactic Federation started coming. And so that's really after I've been working with energy and really know a lot more about energy and have a lot more um, exposure to entities uh, or, I, uh, or to star families um, that these, my star family started to really come and, and it, um, like they've been here before, but they usually just come and, and say whatever it is. I just feel, I felt their presence and then like I wouldn't see them for another year or two, something like that. But it was really in 2013 and, and also 2014 when they when the uh, my star family started coming to me very regularly, regularly as in at least a few times a week. And so they either they didn't really say much to me or I didn't really pick up a lot of what they said to me. But all I can, could really um, remember at that time was every time you show up, I would have this feeling of being in complete bliss. I was absolutely blissed out. And they would just tell me, we, we love you. You are one of us. And we just want to let you know how much we love you. So it's always this wonderful feeling. And... Um, I'm not sure whether I've shared it, but I think there was, um, so the uh, Pleiadians, every time Pleiadians or Acturians showed up, they, that, that's really what I heard is they always show me love. They're just there to hang out with me, really. They're not telling me anything uh, in particular, except that they love me. Um, and they come like every several times a week just to, just to hang out, not to say anything. Um, so that that that's that's what happening for me for a couple of of um, months until the um, galactic federation representatives of the galactic federation started showing up and i think one time they actually showed up and, and told me with they're from the galactic federation and they would like to take me um to you know to do to to have an initiation and I was like, hmm, okay, interesting. Um, and for for whatever reason, I did not freak out. Um, why I, I wouldn't freak out, perhaps, you know. In hindsight, I really don't know why I didn't freak out. But maybe <clears throat> at that time, I'm just so used to um, my star family showing up and just giving me love, just, just hanging out with me in love that for me, there is this just no, the concept of fear, of concern just did not enter my mind at all. I simply say yes on one condition. They can take me to do initiation, but I want to be conscious of it. I want to know what act, act like how the initiation was, what, what, you know, what they do. So, <clears throat> so then they took me um, and I can can still remember that that feeling is that it's my soul. Um, I can feel my soul moving, even though I can also still feel my body um, lying on my bed, um, kind of not sleeping because I'm fully conscious. But I I can still feel my body. At the same time, I also feel my soul. Um, was moving at the same time. I could feel it went into, um, it, it moved several ways. It, it moved in different directions. And then I actually saw the, myself, um, I can actually see that they took me to a place where I can see an, an entity. And this entity is is like in the shape of a human being, but in flames. It's so that that really I'm quite sure is not the <clears throat> it's not the the real form of that person. It's just 
how I perceive the energy. So that's what I, I visualize. How that, that entity actually looked like, I don't know. I just know that for me, that energy showed up as um, fire, flame. So when that happened, um, and so I actually heard um, these, the, the, the conversation, they were actually telepathically, telepathically talking to me and told me that, okay, this initiation is to simply um, to mock you, to let you know who you are. And so this, this being, this in flame, just, um, just touch my arms with um, the, the, the entity's hands. And then that was it. That was the end of the initiation. And, and then that was the, the first initiation. And then there were other initiations after that. And I was actually taken to different um, dimensions to, to just to just to go there, not I didn't really see anything. I didn't meet any ident um, other entities. I was simply taken to different dimensions. It was simply to let uh, acquaint me or reacquaint me with those um, different dimensions. And so that was happening on the soul level. And then on the human level, there's something else completely going on. That was when I, um, really start to find out about um, what the banking system and all the manipulation about it. I started to learn about how the, the government is a lot of manipulation. Um, also, it's, there's a, a, an agenda um, behind government. There's an agenda that's behind the, the health care system that we have. So all of these, um, all these, organizations, systems that, that I looked up to and I thought it are um, really, you know, solid foundation. And I just got a, a glimpse of what's behind them and like all the facade and, and all that. So you know, needless to say, I was really, really angry and trying to, to integrate all that because all of that I never knew before that there was actually so much manipulation behind the scenes that that you know all of a sudden I um, happened to find a lot of um, information on and so I got this this on the human level this is what um, was pulling me and and then um, and then the other side is that you know it all and this actually went on for maybe about a year or two until it got to the point where I have to internally make a choice is do I keep going on to carry on feeling the, um, I would say, the righteousness that I have to fight this and feeling the frustration and also the um, being the victimhood the, of that or do I let go of all of that and really get back to what I came here to do, which is to wake myself up to focus on ascension. So I, I think maybe around 2014, it came to a head. I have to make a choice and I made the choice. I'm here to do a job, which is to wake myself up ascension. So even though my ego was like really, um, uh, want me to you know fight the good fight but I decided that I want to let all of that go and that I needed to ascend and and if I am um and that all that negativity of you know fighting the good fight that that is part of the ego programming as well is going into the negativity and that's I made a choice that I'm gonna let that go and simply focus on ascension. So once I made that choice, I just dropped everything. And I really mean dropped everything. I sold my house, I stopped working my, my job, and I just even left my, the country. I left my, my home country, I left my family, all that I just went traveling for the, uh, the span of about year and a half. I was just completely 
took myself out not solidly a year and a half I think I was the first time I was out of the country for maybe about a good half six months I came back for you know a little bit just to um you know, say hello to everybody. And then I left again, I came back and then left again. So on and off for the next year and a half, that's what I did was took myself out and really, um, really look at what is important to me. Because when I was out of the country, I really didn't have anything to do. I, I don't have to clean the house. I don't have to um, look after my kids I don't have to you know go to my mom's for dinner nothing I don't have to work nothing I just well, well actually I did have to work <clears throat> because I um well at least for part of it I have to but the work I do is just you know very simple work like like really um, looking at the kitchen menial work that you know when I when I leave at the end of the day I don't have to it, I don't have to carry my work back with me. So, and I only have to work a few hours each day, three or four hours maximum. So that was my life for a year and a half that really um, let me, or actually really in my consciousness, I know that there is a brick that was before and then after. So that was the brick. So after that, and so, it was maybe about 2016 that I actually came back um, really full time to be in Toronto again. And then guess what? Once I uh, came back to to Toronto, then the next phase um, started. And the next phase, um, I mean, it never stopped, but it's just uh, the next step up, let's say, um, of, of this ascension or illumination process never stopped. So the next phase was <clears throat> the Pleiadians started coming, talking to me again. And, you know, t the Pleiadians have been talking to me, you know, all the time. But usually they, they just come and say, we love you. They just come and hang out. And I think it was maybe, like I was out of, of the country, maybe around 2014 that time. That's when Cryon started showing up, maybe just once or twice. Um, maybe once every six months, uh, I would I would all of a sudden feel cry on around me. All he did was just, hey, hello, just say, just just, just coming in to to introduce himself. And then so, um, getting back to 2016 when I actually came back, um, that was when the Pleiadians started telling me about me. So they told me my soul is the name of my soul. And I, I know some of you who, who have been um, you know, taking some classes um, with uh, Sifu James who would know that you know, one of his, um, some of his, pre, I would say, teachings from a couple of years ago is, is how to um, discover our soul's name because our soul's name is, um, of course, very different from our human name. From our family name so but each of our soul has a a name um well name is is maybe not the the most correct word but it is the e human equivalent of it it's more of a vibration so there is there's a um a vibration of our uh, soul so the Pleiadians um, told me that, what that is. They also told me my title. Um, some of you may not be too familiar with it, but you know, we, we have a name and we also have a title. The title really tell us um, what we're responsible for. It's, it's kind of like our work related or our function related with the title. So they told me all of that. And they also told me that, you know, my soul was there when earth was created and they, you know, and then all the, the really far out things started to happen is that that's when um, other, other star families started to show up as well. Um, this, the group called the Alpha Centaurian started showing up and they told me that, you know, um, well, uh, from this point onwards, I think my, um, my ability to um, interpret the words, the, the energy and, and be able to, to understand the, the, 
the communication between my staff families uh, and, and myself has become better. So I was able to hear them. So the Alphatorians actually um, come by and, and they started showing up and started telling me that, oh, we actually have a contract with you, with your soul, me, me meaning my soul, and that we are here to um, get you ready, make some adjustment in your matrix to get you ready for your uh, contract with the grace. Um, so I was like, okay, carry on. <laughs> so um, so all of this started happening and each time the Alpha Centaurians show up, I would feel um, them, like I would feel them most in my head. Things are going on in my head. They are adjusting my, um, my matrix re really is matrix. We each have a matrix just like the planet itself has a, a matrix. We each also have a matrix and that's how um, it's, it's like, um, uh, what's a matrix? It's like how we um, energetically relate to other, how we interpret other, um, um, how we interact with one another as energies, as one energetic being to another. So it's all matrix, it's all matrix driven. Matrix, you can just think of that as a, um, I would say an organic programming. So that's what they're doing. They're adjusting my matrix. And then, and then they, they came maybe about, you know, maybe about once every two weeks or so, um, sometimes more often, sometimes less often, but they've been kind of showing up for like since maybe 2016. And so what they're doing is actually get giving me more access to um, who I truly am as a, a soul. And then, and then that's, and then also, um, I think maybe around 27, 26, uh, 2016 or 2017, that's when Cryon started showing up a little bit more often until I think it was 2018 that, you know, Kriya actually showed up, which is Kriya is from the, the Cryon Soul Group and asked me to channel um, her or him or her. Um, and then, so that was the next phase. That's, that's really the next phase of my own illumination. And then now the, the most recent update, which was most recent as in maybe about five weeks ago, uh, the most recent phase of my illumination journey was that, you know, Cryon showed up and asked me, you know, by this time in 2020, Cryon is a regular. Cryon is like showing up at least, you know, every other week. He, he would just come and ask me, oh, okay either hang out or just uh, tell me, ask me to, to uh, open portal or just, you know, whenever I needed some guidance, uh, Cryon would show up. It's, it's, it's kind of feeling like Cryon, uh, ever since I started channeling career, it's like Cryon is always with me. And whenever um, Cryon kind of sensed that, you know, I'm, something is happening and I need it, um, you know, some guidance crying we showed up and then about five weeks ago crying showed up and asked me to um, open a portal up and from a, a galaxy called Chevron and this galaxy is totally not in in the galaxy that the earth um, is part of this galaxy actually is much closer to the central sun so it's a, it's a special assignment I, I understood that from from the first time but then you know usually I would you know go whatever I, I, I hear I, I would you know try to text them um, try to text Franco and say hey this is happening does this uh, is this does this sound okay but this time it was like I was like it was like um, my instructions even though my instructions were it's this is my portal this portal is something that i'm the only one that can 
decide whether I want to open it or not. Because the other portals, usually I have to get agreements from the stakeholders. Sometimes it would be Earth, sometimes it would be the human collective, sometimes it would be um, the um, like other collectives that have a stake or has a role in this. But this one is mine and I need to decide on my own whether I want to open this portal or not. So I was actually not too sure whether I want to open this portal. But then of course, when I actually, um, you know, just sat in meditation and tap into, do I want to open this portal? And I, I have a yes, I got a yes that, you know, this resonate with me. Even though there was a lot of questions in my human mind, I would say the human part of my mind from my ego, you know, well, is this safe to do that? You know, you have to be careful about opening so many portals. I mean, I at this point, I probably have opened maybe about five or 10 portals, um, at least, maybe easily five portals in a span of about two, three months. So fairly, fairly regularly. So I was, so that, that was the, um, the, the question in my mind. And then, um, and then, so when I actually sat down and really reached into my heart and really feel and like felt the resonance and I, I felt it, yes, I need to open this. And then when I opened it, I, the instruction I was given because, um, Usually, I, I would be given instruction. I need to monitor this portal for, let's say, you know, two days, one day, uh, or three days. So usually, it's, it's uh, I need to monitor in a couple of days. But this one is different. In that I'm supposed to monitor this portal for thirty days. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So, <laughs> so <clears throat> I was not. So I was like, okay, 30 days. I set set a reminder um on my in my phone, my calendar reminder, just so that I know what 30 days, uh, when the 30 days would be over. And I think it was over maybe about a week ago. So this this phase of the um the illumination uh is really about chevron. So I so the more and, and like during the span of 30 days, I got so much out of this and I'm still getting more out of this. Um, this galaxy of Chevron is, it's central sun is really much closer to, I would say the creator source than some of the other galaxies or the other, um, or, or the, let's say the Orion, um, you know, the, the Orions, uh, Federation of Orions. So they are more closer to us. There's in, at least in our um, quadrant of the galaxy that we can see the, the, the Orion uh, and the sun of the, and the star, the Sirius star, which is part of the Orion. So, and so what I got was that this is really a, um, this energy that I'm transmitting is really um, waking me up to who I am at a much deeper level. So much so that I now have um, a different understanding. So now when after 30 days of exposing myself to this energy is when I, I finally got it. I finally no, not that I finally got who I am. I'm, I'm still so far away from it. But I got that I'm, I'm, I did not ask the question of who I am in the right way. Because who I am, the, the, when I was asking this question, who I am, what am I supposed to do? What's my purpose? It was all um, from the point of view that I want to know, you know, yes, tell me about this and then I'll just get on with it and I'll do what I'm being told. So I'm actually acting as, what's the, the best, like, 
for lack of a better word for it, it is I'm acting like a kid. I or, or I'm acting like a very good kid that wanted to do that actually wanted to do what my parents want me to do. So I'm acting like a a kid. I'm acting like somebody who don't know who they are, and I just you know just tell me what to do and I'll do it. So that's I'm kind of just acting. More as a sub, like a servant, um, a sub, someone of a subservient position. I'm not asking as um, as a creator. I'm not asking as somebody who is、uh, a sovereign who knows who they are. So that was why, like, so the I finally got that you know who I am is not a question that I. Can get an answer from,、um, maybe in this lifetime, maybe not even in the next lifetime, and I'm not even sure that my soul, even at the soul level, understands who I am because who I am is really source, creator source, and this whole that all of creation is simply to find out who is really.、Um, The creator source trying to find out and get to know itself better. So, at a human level, when I ask this question, it's not a question that can that I can ever find an answer because even source is still trying to find that answer. So, how can me, who is a creation of source or an aspect of source, know the answer to or? Ever be able to find、um, or get the answer to that's it's it's a rhetorical question. It's a question that will never get an answer. However, it is still a question that we that I want to ask because that's really the curiosity of me. And now that my now my now I'm not trying to find out what the answer is. My, the change is I'm open to experience what that is, what the the answer is. I don't want to know. I want to actually experience it, and I so so that that change of mindset、um, is not subtle at all because it it took a lot of different、um, level of understanding until I finally. Got to the part where, oh, I'm not not that I'm not asking the right question.、Um, I think it's a question that needed to be asked, but I'm not asking it from the right state of mind. So that's why the answer I've been getting is not、um, it's not really the real answer. I'm just getting a I'm just getting the next step, the next step, and the next step. But now I finally got to the part where I actually am curious and I'm open to discover the answer. That I am actually open to knowing the answer. So whereas before, I just want to be told what to do. I actually don't want to know who I am. I just want to be told what to do. I just want to be told who I am. I don't actually want to. I don't actually know. That's why I want to be told. Whereas now is. I am open to all possibilities, and I don't want to be told. I want to simply experience it for myself. So, for me, that is the 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 process of illumination, my own journey up until now. So, why is that pertinent? And why would I want to spend a whole month talking about it? It's because I can I can see the parallel because what is happening right now, um, on. On Earth right now is that we are all at the point where we starting to see behind the scenes of what、um, government is all about, of what、um, you know money is all about, and also see what、um, like politics is about, and see what the health the 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 health industry is all about. So, so that feels、um, familiar. That feels familiar. That 
my own journey is is maybe a, a little slightly ahead of the, the the bell curve that now the the whole collective is starting to go through some of the process that I went through earlier. And so that's why I I think that it's pertinent to share my own experience. Not that what I'm going through, everyone else must go through. It's just that it gives some signposts. And also for the next couple of weeks, I also want to share some of my own, uh, I would say, shortcuts or hacks um, that that I got from my own experience, which may help shorten this process so that because for me, it took decades, it took at least two decades for me to get to where I am now. And, and I like if someone who's listening to this would like to shorten this process, I would like to share in the next couple of weeks. Um, some of the, the, the short, well, not really shortcuts, but, you know, the, the essence of what I've learned so far so that it may help you to um, make it easier for you to make that, that transition from each of the steps to the next steps. And I'm not suggesting in any way, shape or manner that you will all find out that you are, you know, you were present at the beginning of when Earth was created. That was all I've shared is simply my unique journey. And each one of you will have your own unique journey. And you will find out things about yourself that um, maybe is totally even beyond what I have experienced. And maybe your way of, of um, the illumination process is not to meet your star family, but really to know this at a different level than me. So I'm not trying to, to put it in your mind that, you, you know, unless you want your, you're comfortable talking to your star family, to you know, people, or be able to understand telepathic communication, that's when that's part of the illumination process for you. I'm not suggesting anything like that. I'm just saying that is that was what um, my process was. And it's up to you to create and, and find out about your own or to co-create your own illumination process. So that's my share for this evening.